Hello and welcome everyone to a 3D Tutor tutorial in which I will show you the fastest way to create your own gray box within Unreal Engine 5. So right now I have a project set up which is basically just a third person template with all the walls and the stuff inside removed. And that's all there is to it for me to start off within this project. Okay, so now that we have our level set up, we're going to make use out of the modeling functionality within Unreal Engine 5. Now, if you don't happen to have this, go into edit mode, uh, select plugins. If you don't happen to have this, when you click on the upper left corner and search through this menu, go on to edit mode, click on plugins, and you'll get this window. Within it, you'll search for modeling, like so. And you'll need to make sure that the modeling tools edit mode is ticked on. Right now, because it is set on beta, Right now, because the functionality is still in beta mode, it is by default, I think, disabled. But the tools we get out of it are really good and it already works really well. So honestly, whenever I'm within Unreal Engine 5, I always make sure I have this enabled anyway. So anyway, let's go out of it and I'll show you the easiest way to make use out of it. At the very top, we have some shapes that we can use as default. And if we were to click on it, we'll notice that we now have some shapes to pick from. But before making use out of that, we need to make sure that our new assets location is set to current folder. And also, we need to go into a new folder that we create. I created myself a custom meshes folder. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And it's just an empty folder that I have it opened. And basically, what this will do is Whenever we create new shapes, all the custom ones will just go into this folder. So we're not cluttering up our project. So since we select the new asset location to be current folder, all the other ones are also going to be set as that. The way we're going to use it is by simply selecting a shape and click on the world, we get an object and then we can make use of it however way we want it. I also have all the snapping enabled and I make sure that the snapping rotation is set to 10. This way I can just rotate my object 90 degrees and it'll be super easy later on. So basically whenever I make a gray box, I always make sure that the snapping tools are enabled just because it helps me out so much later on as it speeds up our process so much by simply doing that. Okay, so now that we have objects, we can simply make duplicates out of it and easily create our own gray box. We can also duplicate it up, for example, scale this down and just drag it out like so. And we get a nice pillar just by doing a couple of manipulations using our gizmo. So just like that, we're able to get a really nice shape for the basics of our pillar like so. Anyway, what happens if we want to get a more complex shape? Well, the way to do it is we can create a new box and let's say I want to make an arc for it. Well, it's quite easy to do. I'm going to go ahead and extract this, go up in the air a little bit and we're going to make use out of another shape. Let's make use out of a cylinder, for example. And before making use out of it, we also have some additional options to adjust the shape of our asset before placing it into the world. So right now I can see that this cylinder is a little bit too low poly and the way I'm going to fix that up is by adjusting the radial slices. By changing this up to 42 and doubling it, we can see that we get bigger and higher resolution for it. So now by clicking on top of our box like so to place it horizontally, we get another shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and click complete. And what we're going to do is we're going to make use out of this shape to cut out a hole from within the box itself. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to drag this sphere into the cylinder like so. And actually I'll make it a little bit bigger just so to be nicer sort of a shape like so. So now we're going to get a really nice arc and I'm going to make sure I select the box first because that is the one that is going to be used as the main item. 
The order of selections are always important, so make sure you select the main object first. Anyway, once we have this selected, by holding shift, I'm going to select the cylinder like so, and then I'm going to scroll down within the poly model, I'm going to use mesh boolean option, like so. By clicking on it, we see the type of result that we're going to get, and the operations, there are multiple operations that we can use, but by default is set to A minus B, which is the main selection, take away the second selection. And of course, the new asset location is going to be the current folder because that is the one that we used previously and is going to be changed throughout, or it should be changed throughout the entire modeling toolkit. But just in case, make sure that this is set to current folder. And anyway, once we have it sorted, let's go ahead and click accept. And that's how we get ourselves an arc. Using this, we can make some really nice arcs and for example if we want to make duplicates we can hold alt and simply hold and drag our object like so and that is how we're going to get another duplicate out of it so by doing that and having the grid lock snapping tool functionality turned on we can make some really quick shapes that snap one to another like so so this is going to be really easy for us to model let's say we are having a little bit too many objects and it's hard to navigate with them all so if we want to for example drag this up and select them all and hold alt and duplicate it we can totally do so at once but once we deselect it selecting them back would be quite a hassle so doing it all over again would be really annoying to do so the way we're going to do it instead is if we have all of them selected and if we were to click Control and G, we can group all of the assets together. And this way, when we deselect it and select it back, all of the assets are going to be still grouped up. So it'll be so much easier to make a selection using this method. Now we can make a duplicate by simply holding Alt like we did previously and making a sort of a shape like this. So that is super easy and nice to do within Unreal Engine 5. Okay, so now let's say we want to get rid of the, some of the pieces from within this grouped up asset. Well, the easiest way to ungroup them is by simply clicking Shift and G, we're able to nicely ungroup this entire grouped asset. So now, although the bottom ones are grouped up, you're able to independently select the top ones since they are ungrouped and just delete a couple of them like so. So again, this is quite an easy and nice way to work with your assets. I'm just going to drag all of them down. And afterwards, we can easily check how it looks like within our level by clicking on the play button and checking out how the asset looks like in comparison to the human scale. So this is really simple and nice way of creating your own gray boxes. But let's say we want to add even more detail onto our gray box and let's say we even have a map idea for what we want we can make use out of the poly extrusion functionality within the modeling toolkit and what this will basically do is it'll give you a way to draw lines simply on the map itself and it's super easy and intuitive way of making shapes and for example once we're finished it we can connect the dots like so and now by by simply going up or down, we can make an extrusion to the shape. So using this method, we can make nice custom shapes by hitting complete and then going back onto the poly extrude tool. So we can make a level design that is going to be later on used as a way to check if the proportions are right, if the level feels good, and if you like the idea of the entire boundary box, for example. So once we're done, we can hit complete, go to play mode, and check how it looks and that's all there is to it we can make quick custom shapes for our gray box and simply layering out all the shapes for building out our level but anyway now i'm going to play a quick sped up video showing on how i make use out of these tools to make a nice arced bridge and later on i will show you how to make a use out of the gray box and take it to the next stage of a 3d environment pipeline
So now that I have my arcway built as a gray box and I have all the proportions set and I have them everything the way I want it to be. Now what we can do is in order to continue and building up our assets and replacing them with actual props, we can select all of them and I'm just going to go ahead and get all of them selected like so. I'm also going to select the grid as well uh, as a ground. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and go down within the modeling toolkit and we're going to combine all of them so we can export it out as one asset. This way we'll have all of the necessary information for the scaling and what we need to create in order to replace all the gray box static meshes. We're going to go on to the create tab and we're going to select mesh merge. So by clicking on this button over here, we're going to be able to create a new object with all the gray box items combined as one. So just make sure you have all of it selected beforehand. We're going to create a mesh within a current folder. So once we've done it, let's go ahead and click accept like so. And we're going to get a combined mesh of an entire asset like so. If you don't want it to be combined within your level, what we can do is we can within the mesh merge option, we can select uh, instead of deleting all the inputs that we had selected. And instead, we're going to select keep all inputs. So this way we can click accept. And we're still going to be able to work with our level while having a combined mesh done for us, which we can now export it out. Once we have it combined, we're going to delete the combined mesh and within our folder that we had opened up, we're going to search for the combined version. So this is the combined version. I can drag it out and I can see it is the one. So now what we can do is right click on it. We can go on to asset actions and we can select export. I'll just select the folder that I want it to be exported out and we can rename this as gray box. The save type is going to be FBX. Other than that, we can go ahead and click save. There are going to be certain options, but let's go ahead and leave them as a default. I'm not sure which type is set to default, but usually using 2013 version will make sure that the compatibility with other software is going to be great or when you're importing your asset. So once we're done with all of it, let's go ahead and click export like so. Now to import it within your 3D modeling software, it is quite easy. Right now I have Blender, so I'm going to make use out of that. And I'm going to import an FBX. I'm going to find the FBX that we just exported, select it, and hit import FBX. And since we had it all combined, all of it is going to be imported into our software. Now if I were to make a duplicate out of it, I'll just... I'm not sure why, but I think I have two planes. So I'll go ahead and delete one. And the one that we have, I'm going to duplicate it now. Hide the original one. And for this, I'm going to go on to edit mode. Select one of the pieces for the asset. For example, this arc over here. Hit L to make an entire selection based on the mesh itself. And then you hit P to split it off by selection. And now we have ourselves a asset that we can make use out of as an independent asset like so and i'll go back onto the object mode and we have this split off separately so we can use this as a starting point to create new assets and have it as a reference for our gray box now we're going to speed up for the video and get this asset modeled up and then we're going to go through the steps on how to import the fbx file back onto unreal engine 5. So after which, all we need to do is hit file, select export, and make sure we are saving up as an FBX file. All the default settings can be used as is. 
all we have to do is go back onto Unreal Engine 5 and I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder and I'll just make sure that the new assets that I created are going to be placed in this folder so it wouldn't be messing up with our gray box that we had previously. Just drag it inside of our Unreal Engine 5, hit import. We don't really need to change the import settings by default. They should be fine as is. So let's go ahead and do that. And then after which we're going to get ourselves an asset, which we can then place it in our level. So we can just, just replace all the gray box items with the ones that we just created. And they're just going to fit just as they are. They're going to be exactly the same shape since we use the reference from the gray box. And we don't really need to scale them up or down. We just need to place them in the right position. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe, and check out our other content as well. We do online courses, 3D modeling, texture giveaways, and more. So all the links can be found in the description down below. Thanks for watching.